This is me. I'm just an average guy like everybody else. And this is a day in my life as a Muslim student. Being a Muslim student, life can have its own challenges. But yeah, it's worth it. And also, keeping God and my faith on my mind always makes it seem easier. Islam keeps me grounded, spiritually uplifts me and prepare me for whatever I'm about to take on. It's beautiful knowing that the day that lies ahead of me has a true purpose and meaning to it. At the start of my day, I have to plan around both my academic and religious commitments, which can be tough at times, but eventually become used to. You know, in Islam, we are obligated to learn and seek knowledge. In fact, the very first word that would be to Prophet Muhammad upon whom be peace or Iqra which means read this is my motivation and being at Strathclyde helps me to fulfill that aspiration I start my morning with thanks excited for a new day and quite at peace really I start every morning just like everybody else with coffee of course from the perspective of a Muslim woman, it's interesting to think how does everyone see me with my headscarf on? Do they even know what it means or why I wear it? Does it matter? I put my headscarf on during my second year of university and I can quite honestly say my friends at the time, who were all non-Muslims, were incredibly supportive. Being a Muslim woman, it's pretty obvious. It's who you are. And for me, the headscarf it's part of my Islamic uniform, it's modesty, and most importantly, it's a link to faith. The Prophet Muhammad said, be in this life like a traveler. And you know what? Every day at university is an adventure for me. And that adventure begins with a stop to the library. Group work, studying, assignments, exams, all the pressures of student life are there. I think my favorite aspect of even just going to the library 
is the incredible people I meet along the way. Friends, whether they're Muslim or non-Muslim, and even the staff. And I have to say, the library's looking pretty good these days. And so, Islam demands that you do the best that you can do. And of course, everybody wants to do well. But I feel personally that it's not just about doing well so that you can make lots of money. It's actually about doing well so you can be the best person that you can be so that the rest of humanity can benefit. But maybe that's just me having big dreams. A big struggle for me is finding halal food to eat on campus. Usually I have to go outside, which can be time consuming. Sometimes you just can't trust halal labels. So although I have been told that there's halal food available in the union, I have to verify it. Hi there, who brings you in? Hi, I was looking to buy some halal food, but I was not really sure that if it's halal or not, so I was being told to come and speak to you. Yeah. So I just want to confirm if the food is halal or not, because I'm quite dubious with regards to that. Absolutely no problem, I'll, I'll show you in the right, right, that would be great. Just let me explain to you about the halal food we actually do in Strathby Students uh, Union. Um, we've actually got a large selection of halal foods, and um, this is where for chicken selection, it's a butterfly um, chicken breast and also a half chicken, which is um, suitable for halal. It's um, in a spice and it's served with a piri piri sauce. As you can see, it just sits in my bain here. When the checks come through, we actually then put it on the plate and we'll send it out. It's totally separated from every other pieces of food we've got, which is important if it's halal. I'll just show you our, our other things that's on the menu, which is halal, if you just follow me. Um, Part of, part of our halal menu is actually, um, we've got a selection of burgers as well. So when we prepare the halal burgers, they're totally separated from any other kind of food. That way it stops to cause contamination. Um, so we've got a halal lamb burger and a halal beef burger as well. Um, the important fact about halal food as well is we've got two fryers. One fryer is for the for, um, fish, another fryer is purely for vegetable uh, chips and things like that. So that again, suitable for halal, it's totally separated from the other foods um, and natural burgers are actually cooked to order and they'll go under the grill here. Once they're ready, they go in the bun and they're sent away as well. And look, this, I'll just show you our storage area for the halal foods as well. Here we go. This is our, our main walk-in fridge and this is our halal butcher meat section which is totally separated from that. And because it's halal, it's in the, the clearer containers. Again, this is where chicken, every chicken dish we do, bar one, is actually halal. The only non-halal chicken dish we do is the, the chicken wings. Um, we can't verify if it's actually halal, so we're happy to say it's not halal, whereas everything else is halal. I would say 90% of our menu is suitable for halal. Um, so I'll actually show you our deli bar section, which is, again, 90% of the deli bar section is suitable for halal. Um, we feel that's important that we actually offer halal, um, we're actually producing a service, so I'll take you out front and I'll actually show you what we're deli bar, and then that way you can spread the, 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 the good word. Uh, if you want to follow, if you want to just yeah, come this yeah. way and follow me out. And as you can see, this is our actual deli bar. The beauty with the deli bar is, you come up to the deli bar and you've got the choice of breads, you've got the choice of marge, non-marge, butter, you've got the choice of your salad fillings. And then we've actually got a good selection of the actual food that's suitable for halal. You can see the chicken dishes here, the deli chicken, mm -hmm. the spiced chicken, the Cajun chicken, chicken mayonnaise, um, chicken sweet and sour, uh, is all halal. Uh, this side we've got um, tuna, egg mayonnaise, prawns, cheese and a large selection of fresh vegetables. 
all that is halal as well. There's only about maybe, I would say, maybe five or six items on this daily bar menu which isn't suitable for halal. The halal dishes are actually identifiable by the white oh, spoons. And also when we're doing when we're doing the halal food, we've got the white board as well, which mm -hmm. totally, totally takes away from any cross contamination with the halal side. So you can actually see we're actually trying to, to promote halal food within the, the union. After seeing that, I'm really so glad and amazed at how carefully the staff here look after the halal food. I mean, it shows that Strathclyde are doing what it takes to fulfill not only the Muslim needs, but those of other faiths too. I can definitely see myself coming more often now with my friends and pals. Things just became so much easier. In between learning the Quran, praying, looking for halal food, and all my classes, it's not really that difficult to fit in time to study. Believe or not, it's easier than you think. There's a great saying of the Prophet Muhammad upon whom be peace, the best of people are those that bring most benefit to the rest of mankind. So yeah, being religious is important, but the fact of the matter is, we still need lots of Muslim professionals out there. Doctors, lawyers, engineers, even the least significant job out there has to be done by someone. I think it's vital that Muslim students especially play a leading example in this. After all, Strathclyde bursting with opportunities. Going to class just like everybody else. Education is a very important part of university life, of course, we come here to study. But even Islamically, you should always try and develop, always try and grow as a person. And that's why we need to be constantly in a state where we're learning. Everybody's just a bit lost. But being at university, you're around so many open-minded people. People are open, they want to understand where you're coming from. They want to get to know you. And they're very respectful of her faith. And I know when I wear the headscarf, people aren't laughing at me or looking down at me. In fact, they respect my choice. And that's just one of the things that I love about being a student. Sometimes you're asked, how can you balance being a Muslim, especially when Islam demands so much from you, and studying at the same time? You have to pray five times a day. Most of the time, you'll usually pray around two to three times on campus. And you always find yourself on the move, organizing your schedule, reprioritizing your time, because prayer is so important. It's just you centering yourself once again, and you just finding peace, you know? You can drown, you can totally get lost. And sometimes, you know, people talk about religion being a barrier to where you want to go in life. Well, in fact, if I have a question, I'll just put my hand up and ask. And I have to say, my lecturers are fantastic. And sometimes, you're kind of juggling between, should I leave class? I need to run, I need to pray. And the importance of prayer is fundamental. And I think a lot of lecturers will understand if you need to leave. You know, people might think I'm different when they find out I'm Muslim. But to be honest, I'm just the same. All it is, is that there are a few extra priorities I have to keep in check. For example, my prayers. Sometimes prayer times may clash with the class timings. It can get a bit awkward to leave in the middle of the class to go and pray. But I've done it so many times now that I've become used to it. Yeah, I might get a few looks here and there, but fulfilling my religious obligation is more important to me. 
and I'm also aware of the fact that there are lots of Muslims that do it too. Plus the lecturers don't mind anyway. They're usually quite understanding here at Strathclyde and I really do appreciate that. If you ask him, why does he still pray five times a day? When so many others have strayed, smiling he would say, I am a Muslim. Allahu Akbar Some sites is almost, almost a lifesaver for me It allows me to pray five times a day in congregation has ablution facilities You know, it just allows me to meet different people with the same mentality We just feel so blessed I mean, it increases that sense of spirituality and brotherhood amongst us and also allows us to get involved in different kinds of projects and activities. Being at Samsa is, is fantastic. I just find this place is full of so much good, so much fun and so much learning you're around people that are really enthusiastic they you're around good people that balance studies and faith we've got people from all over the world phd masters undergraduate we've got people born here we've got guys and girls working together but in an environment that they both feel comfortable working in and that they can respect each other So have I had any awkward experiences here? Well, of course, but you know what? It's just part of the fun, I suppose, of being Muslim and being a student. You'll find yourself sometimes praying in the most awkward places because it's important to you, so you'll do it. And I have to say, I'm so grateful for the university investing in the reflection room. It just makes walking down more hills to get to Samsa a lot easier. And prayer in itself is a time that you just get to run away from all the bookshelves, the coursework, the assignments, and you just get to, to breathe. Spiritually come back to where you should be and find yourself again. So as a Muslim on campus, what's different about you? I mean, what is your routine like every single day? 
Uh, actually, there is no really big difference between me and no Muslim student. Just I follow some rule. Sunnah Prophet Muhammad sallallahu wasallam, and take care of my behavior, because when people see me, they don't see a student; they see a Muslim student. So if I do something wrong, they're going it's Islam. So as a Muslim, mashallah, he's got a beard and he looked the part. I mean, does anyone look at you funny, or do you get any kind of you know smirks or comments made towards you? It's not really comments. Maybe people will think, like, where does this guy go during classes and he just goes away for five minutes and he comes back. Okay. No, no one's given me any funny looks or anything. Um, I would say I'm normal like everyone else. No, everybody's respectable, everybody respects us. Nobody's ever said anything so far. I've never experienced anything like that in uni. No, I would definitely say uh, the wizard part, like having to do that in the library in the sink. Uh, sometimes you you get people looking at you funny, but uh, you know that's uh, that's pretty much it. Um, my funniest story would be um, on my first day at um, university. I was I met a new, well, a new person in my course, and we were on our break from class, and. Um, I was looking for a place to pray and I just said to the person I was with, um, I'm going to go and pray, I'll maybe catch you in a bit. And he goes, okay, I saw the church down there, just down there. I go, no, no, I'm looking for the mosque. <laughs> so you didn't know you were a Muslim? <laughs> no. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. I, th I remember I was like I was in Livingston Tower once and I just could not bother running to some sort of even library to pray and I went right up to the top floor and it was like a staff room or something and someone and I walked in and this guy was eating a sandwich I was like do you mind if I pray and he went no go for it <laughs> so I was just randomly praying and he was sitting eating his sandwich and he was staring at me the whole time you know when you can feel someone's eyes on you yeah yeah yeah, yeah that <laughs> happened and then I just went thanks and ran away <laughs> never saw him again um, I get asked quite a lot, oh, can you eat this meat, can you eat that meat, is this halal, is that... And Alhamdulillah, Strathclyde is very accommodating for that as well, because yeah. they've now brought in halal meat into most of the cafes around campus. So what's the biggest challenge you face as a Muslim on campus? Is it is it your prayers? The only hardest part is uh, where to perform wudu. If I don't have wudu, where do I do it? You mean to wash, right? Yes. And why do you have to pray? What, what's so important about praying? To be a Muslim, you have to pray five times a day. It's one of our duties as a Muslim. So praying is quite an important part of your day then, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Well, we've got five prayers that we need to juggle around our, our lectures. So that can become, it can become a task, especially when you've got labs and stuff, but it's doable. Most of, most of the unis, uh, most of the lectures, they are quite, they're, they're lenient. They let you go if you have they're to. They're very understanding. Yeah, you, all you have to do is yeah. just tell them. and. They're quite accommodating, they let you go and pray. <laughs> Compared to non Muslims, we tend to come to the mosque regularly as well to, during our studies, to, like come pray, Zohar, Asar, Maghrib, okay. whenever we can, basically. Being a Muslim on campus is really easy. Um, it's really, uh, Strathclyde University is really accommodating for all your Muslim needs, especially your five prayers. You know, like you'll just run to Samsa, which is a huge um, facility that's created on campus for anyone who wants to pray, for anyone who needs advice on um, anything. It balance, helps really balance your um, work and your spiritual life on campus. They, they sometimes feel like it's a burden uh, over the Muslims that they had to do these things for five times a day. I mean, if they'll not do that, I mean, I don't know what will happen. They don't know. I mean, Islam is so flexible and so uh, comfortable religion with the nature of human beings. So uh, it's not, I mean, something to be uh, burdened of. It's, it's quite normal. I feel, even I feel relaxed uh, during the prayers break when I, uh, uh, I've done with the lectures and I go for the Zohar prayer and I offer that I feel quite relaxed and I'm uh, again fresh for for the next lectures if I have later on. So what happens then if you haven't got time to come to Samsa and you need to pray somewhere else? The, what, what happens then? Yeah the good thing is um, in the library and um, they have a prayer reflection room so if, obviously with the campus being quite big you don't have time to, read, to go from one side of the campus to the other so it's, the library is good where you can just go in and you can read your namaz there. No, Alhamdulillah, I think it's okay because uh, you're able to get to prayer time and, and, and times when you're not able to, like sometimes if I'm in the library and I'm not able to come down here, uh, I'll just go into a corner in the library and do my salah. It's kind of weird doing it was in the toilets, but Alhamdulillah, you would got to do it, you know. Uh, initially it was, yeah. 
but like to, uh, when you continue to do it, you realise that you fit, you pre you're studying around your prayers in at the end of the day. Okay. So, as a Muslim, to all the non-Muslims out there that are watching, what is your message to everybody else about Islam? What would you say to everyone out there? Maybe doesn't know much about Islam, isn't quite sure, they watch things on the news, they think we are this and that. What would be your piece of advice or your message to everybody out there? Um, you just need to check your sources. You know, there's a lot of propaganda online and people might find a website and think, okay, this is representing Islam, but when it's not. Um, so I would always say, always talk to someone, someone that is a practicing Muslim, because they'll give you the real picture. You know, websites, you know, you don't know who's behind that screen. Don't perceive anything about Islam just by hearing from the media or from anyone else. It's a religion of peace. I mean, Islam means peace. In an age where we see Islam constantly being attacked by the media, it's important that you all pick up a copy of the Quran and realize that Islam is not what the media portrays it to be. It's a peaceful religion, and I promise you that. And it's up to you to open up the Quran and see for yourself. You might wonder why you're not going to see my face in this video. And that's a choice that I've made. Just like wearing the headscarf. For me, I hope to represent a lot of Muslim women across campus. To say that, you know what, our voice is still strong. You can listen to us and not have to necessarily look at us to respect or understand where we're coming from. But you can be rest assured, I do actually exist. One of my favourite aspects of Samsa is the social aspect. Being a lady, yes, we do talk a lot. And most of the time it's pretty beneficial stuff. So at Samsa we have sister circle. This is something that we use to facilitate conversation about contemporary life. In fact, we discuss issues that face us all in our day-to-day -day reality. And it's so nice, everybody respects everybody's views. One of my other favourite things is sports. And I have to say, girls play tough, even at basketball. So again, you know, the headscarf, my religion, it doesn't stop me doing things everybody else does. In fact, it's more motivation to give 110%. Taught us to love and to care for each other. That is the soon of the truth. When the day is finally up and I get home, unpack my bag, organize for tomorrow, do my work, I begin to realize that, you know what? In fact, being Muslim and being a student, they work pretty well together. It's easy. You just have to get the right balance. And that can take some time, especially when you first start. But as you go on, you'll realize that if you have the right intention, you have the support behind you, and you have the strength and belief, you'll get through anything. It doesn't matter so much. Let's pray for our brothers, let's pray for our sisters, let's help one another. Let's pray for our Oma. Let's pray for our brothers, let's pray for our sisters, let's help one another. Let's pray for our Oma. Let's pray for our brothers, let's pray for our sisters, let's help one another, let's pray for our own mind. Let's pray for our brothers, let's pray for our sisters, let's help one another. A day in the life of a Muslim student. It's pretty normal really. Just maybe a few awkward things in between. Let's pray for our own mind. Let's pray for our brothers, let's pray for our sisters, let's help one another, let's pray for our own so as you can see 
being a Muslim student ain't really that hard. Although my story is just one of millions out there. Looking back at my long and busy day, it's time to think and reflect. Have I accomplished what I set out to do this morning? As I reach home and prepare for bed, I begin to realize and be grateful for all the good that happened and try to remain patient even after all the bad. If there's one thing I love most about being a Muslim at Strathclyde is that my faith keeps me strong and pushes me by the difficult times. Having good company by my side, having understanding lectures and teachers, plus endless opportunity to learn and progress makes me so thankful. This was a day in my life as a Muslim student and I pray that tomorrow brings me more opportunity to become a better person than I was today. اللهم باسمك أموت وأحيا 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 Thank <laughs> you.